No, did it again, so got it. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're gonna to continue our study of paper 24, uh, Higher Personalities of the Infinite Spirit, and we're on section seven, Origin of the Graduate Guides, and that's on page 270.8 of the original Urantia book. So let's say a quick prayer and we'll get started. It's gonna be kind of a short meeting tonight. We've got one section. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. Pray that you'll open our hearts and minds that we might remember some of this and share it with others. And it might prepare us for that which is to come in the mansion world. So we say this in the name of your son, Michael Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to mute because I'm getting reverb over here. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. That's all right. Actually, don't mute. Let me mute. You go ahead and take the first. Okay. Seven, origin of the graduate guides. Though evolution is not the order of the central universe, we believe that the graduate guides are the perfected or more experienced members of another order of central universe creatures, the Havona Servitals. Graduate guides show such a breadth of sympathy and such a capacity for understanding the ascended, ascendant creatures that we are convinced they have gained this culture by actual service in the super universe realms as the Havona servitals of universe, universal ministry. If this view is not correct, how then can we account for the continuous disappearance of the senior or more experienced servitals? Okay, remember last time we talked about the Havona cervical, servitals, which are stationed in Havona. And this section talks about where the origins of the graduate guides come from. And they believe the graduate guides originate from the Havona servitors. Okay. Uh, another interesting thing, right at the beginning of this paragraph, it says, though evolution is not the order of the central universe. Why is that? Y'all remember? Well, it's perfect. It's perfect. It never evolves, right? Havona the only thing that evolves in Havona is experience from us going through there, right? And the Havona pilgrims, I mean, the Havona beings that live there and the paradise citizens both gain experience from our experience, right? But it, that is not evolution, no, right? It's the only part of the, the grand universe that is not uh, evolutional, right? The grand universe being the the seven super universe, including paradise and, and the seven rings of Havona. Remember the master universe includes, includes all the outer space levels, right? See, I got it right tonight, Rodney. You know why I got it right? <laughs> We've been that? listening to the forward papers this week again. <laughs> okay. When I have to review it, I remember everything. <laughs> of course. It's a good review. All right. So they believe that the Havona cervical, cerv cervical, <laughs> I can tell I was a chiropractor <laughs> for years, couldn't you? The Havona <laughs> cervicals, <laughs> yeah, believe, they believe that those are the beings that eventually become the graduate dot guides. Okay, so let's just go on to the next paragraph and this is going to become clear. Uh, Roger, yeah, I can't remember us reading about the cervicals. Okay, well, that was in the did we? Uh, Yes, we did. It was in the section before this. Okay. Uh, I believe it was right in the section before this. Yeah. I must have missed it. No, it was, it was before that. Yeah, it was, before that, that yeah, was, it was way back up in no, there. Okay. So you'll have to look it up rather right. than us going back through it. Okay. I understand. Yeah. The servitals originate, though they serve in, uh, humans in, uh, in Havona, right? Just like the graduate guides. But um, we'll, we'll let, I'll let you yeah, look at okay. that up. That's okay. Let's hit, let's hit the link here. And um, this is kind of interesting information anyway. It said the Havona cervical, cervical is going to do it again. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, there's a, <laughs> a quarter of these. Uh, 
achieve the divine embrace and never return. And what they believe is this quarter of the servitals that get the uh, embrace uh, basically uh, become the right. graduate guides, right? Okay. And there's, there's over 138 billion of these beings that serve on Uversa. Okay, they're assistants to the ancients of days. Okay, they uh, assist and eventually become graduate guides. That's what they say here. This is from this paper. Creatures, uh, uh, they're creatures of the seven master spirit and the seven supreme power directors. Okay, they're fourth creatures. They discern reality of spirit and matter and they are semi-physical. Okay, so you can actually see them. Okay, and they help ascenders on the super universe capitals. That's what I was talking about. They actually help us along when we get to Uversa, not Havana. I probably said Havana while I got in that Uversa. Okay, um, they're considered the Midway creatures of Havana, uh, and their number is. Uh, prodigious, in other words, there's more being created every, all the time. Each group of them created or resemble the master spirit of whom they're created under, you know, just like the seven super universes, right? Hmm. Uh, they resemble uh, the master spirits and they stay with the same pilgrim throughout your ascent uh, on into Havona. All right. That helped. Refresh yes, thank you. Bit? Sure. Okay, Rodney, would you take the next one? The servitor will be long. Of course. Or... A servitor will be long absent from Havana on Super Universe assignment, having been on many such missions previously, will return home, be granted the privilege of, quote, personal contact with the Paradise Central Shining will be embraced by the luminous persons and disappear from the recognition of his spirit fellows, never more to appear among those of his kind. Okay, there's several things in this, this <laughs> paragraph we need to kind of explain, okay? He's granted personal contact. What does that mean? In other words, he's, a, he's granted to go before God the Father. That's what the Paradise Central Shining is, is God the Father. Okay. And he is embraced by God the Father, but he's also embraced by, what does it say here? Luminous persons. Who would be the luminous persons? God the Son, God the Spirit, right? So it's like a, par like a trinity embrace almost. OK, and when he is, he disappears to never return again to the, those among his own kind. OK, now, don't think he's gone. <laughs> That's the next paragraph. OK, uh, all right. Or the paragraph after that. Roger, I sort of thought luminous persons meant perhaps uh, personalities on the infinite spirit worlds that yeah are, uh in the all of paradise well the luminous it's luminous yeah luminous persons could be any of the trinity or the master spirits themselves right because they would be considered luminous persons I all right understand. but what the way they say it here you think they say with the paradise central shining and we know that's god the father that's it's always god the father right but the other, and I said, will be embraced by the luminous persons. That indicates that it's probably just the Trinity, right? I understand. Or, like, Trinity. Okay. Um, Gary, would you take the next one, please? On returning. On returning from super universe service, a Havana servitor may enjoy numerous divine embraces in E emerge therefrom merely an excellent server, exalted servitor. Experience the luminous embrace does not necessarily signify that the servitor must translate into a graduate 
guide, but almost one quarter of these who achieve the divine embrace never return to the service of the realms. Okay, so many of these servitals get this divine embrace and don't disappear, right? They go on as exalted servitals, just like they were. But one quarter of them never appear again. Okay, and this, the next two uh, pieces go together, the, the sentence and the paragraph. Uh, Jane, can you see that on your? I have the book. Okay, would you need to read the next two then? It appears. Okay. <clears throat> that appears on high records a succession of such entries as this. And servital number, I don't think I can say that number. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Just say 842, 842. <laughs> yeah. 682, 846, Yeah, that's trillion. what it is, actually. And then billion, million. Billion and million. Billion yeah. and 682 million. 846,782 of Havona named Sudna came over from the super universe service, was received on paradise, knew the father, entered the divine embrace, and is not. That's pretty special. And is not. In other words, after he received the, the divine embrace, he was never seen again as his original self, right? He was translated into a new being. Maybe Makes he sense. disappeared. What well, he that's just. He, we definitely disappeared. The question is what happened there? And that's why. Yeah, they, I mean, you know, it could be. Yeah. He may be something that not transformed, but, uh, you know, maybe he went into heavenly retirement. Yeah, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a possibility. We don't know. Yeah, that's right. We don't know for sure. Now, I'm going to really throw a monkey wrench into y'all tonight. This is, you're going to love this paragraph. All right. Uh, Diane, would you read this paragraph, please? When such an entry appears on the records, the career of such a servital is closed. But in just three months, a little less... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but in just... <laughs> oh, boy, that's a faux pas. But in just three moments, a little less than three days of your time, a newborn graduate guide spontaneously appears on the outer circuit of the Havona universe. And the number of graduate guides allowing for a slight difference do no doubt to those in transition exactly equals the number of vanished servitals. Okay, so I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you corrected yourself. And I didn't <laughs> correct you. <laughs> okay, now what's the monkey wrench I wanted to throw in here with y'all? It must be what you were explaining about time. When we die, the three yeah. moments. Now, it says here in just three moments, a little less than three days of your time, right? right. This is not what it says when it says we go to the mansion worlds. I want to make that clear. All right. On the mansion worlds, it says three periods, right? And they're talking oh. about mansion world periods, which is not the same as three moments of paradise time. You follow me? Gotcha. How, how long is a period? We think a period is actually... Uh, nine days no no i'm sorry i'm 18. sorry three days of our so time it so be it three would days be nine days uh to get to the mansion worlds right not three days you follow me so the period is different than the moment they're talking about the period they're talking about mansion world time here they're talking about paradise time okay that's the difference. Remember, paradise time, it takes a thousand years to make one day of paradise time. So it takes Earth days a thousand years to make one paradise day. Make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gary's going, well, I don't know. It's funny, we just talked about this before this meeting. He said yeah. three moments. Three, <laughs> three moments. Yeah. Months. yeah. Okay, These so guys don't realize I'm a very impatient person. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, you really are. Yeah. You won't even know. You'll be asleep <laughs> when you wake up. You say, I must have just died. I just got here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when a, uh, a cervical is embraced, immediately following that three moments of our or three days of our time, a new graduate guy appears on the seventh circuit. Why does it appear on the seventh circuit? Because it, it appears on the very first planet, the satellite planet of the seventh circuit. Why would it appear there? Because that's where we appear and that's where that graduate guide would be assigned to a new candidate that just got to have You mean the pilot world? The pilot world of the seventh circuit, right, of Havona. Right. And that's where we would wake up. Right. So when we wake up on the pilot world at the seventh circuit, the graduate guide would appear there for us. And we would have that same graduate guide through all billion planets of Havona. OK, same one. All right. Now we're going to add something else to that. OK. Um, Back to you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> I... Okay. There is an additional reason for supposing the graduate guides to be evolved Havona servitals, and that is the unfailing tendency of these guides and their associated servitals to form such extraordinary attachments. The manner in which these supposedly separate orders of beings understand and sympathize with one another is wholly inexplicable. It is refreshing and inspiring to witness their mutual devotion. So the servitals and the graduate guides are on the same wavelength, right? As soon as they appear as graduate guides, they, they seem to get along perfectly with the Havona cervicals just as if they've always been cervical, cervicals, <laughs> right? I'm going to rename them regardless. <laughs> right. I think I think we could change the letter part as Sir Vital. That's <laughs> right. There you go. You got it. And be fine. I'm not working tonight. <laughs> you know what? That's from from all these years of looking at X-ray and saying, "You see your cervical spine here. It's not normal." <laughs> Uh, over and over and over again. Okay. The seven master spirits. Rodney, would you take that? Yes. The seven master spirits and the associated seven supreme power directors, respectively, are the personal repositories of the mind potential and the power potential of the supreme being, which he does not as yet operate personally. And when these paradise associates collaborate to create the Havana servitals, the latter are inherently involved in certain phases of supremacy. Havana servitals are thus in actuality, a reflection in the perfect central universe of certain evolutionary potentialities of the time space domains, all of which is disclosed when a servitor undergoes transformation and recreation. We believe that this transformation takes place in response to the will of the infinite spirit, undoubtedly acting in behalf of the supreme. Graduate guides are not created by the supreme being, but we all conjecture that experiential deity is in some way concerned in those transactions, which brings these beings into existence. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated, but think of it this yeah, it way. Is. The seven master spirit and the power directors, okay, 
act in place of the supreme being. Why is that? Because the supreme being is not in full fruition yet, right? Of course. So the, they are acting in uh, you know, as the vicegerent of the supreme being, right? Okay. So when these Havona servitals are uh, are created or when they are transformed into the graduate guides, they believe that the master spirit of the super universe in which that servital has been working, you follow me? Keeps that same tinge of the, that same master spirit when they're recreated as graduate guides, and we believe that this is because it's the will of the infinite spirit, okay? They want to keep them along the same line they came for. Because, why would that be? Because when they're a, a, a assigned to mortals that come from a certain super universe, they want to assign a being that has the experience and the thought patterns of that same being coming from that same universe. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah the same aroma. That's right. And that's why they say, but we all conjecture that the experiential deity in some ways concerns those transactions which bring these beings into existence, right? Because it's the experience from what? That particular super universe. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now that I've enlightened y'all tonight, we have one more paragraph, right? <laughs> all right. Gary, I believe you're the last one. The Havona now transversed by ascending mortals differs in many respects from the central universe as it was before the time of Grand Fonda. The arrival of mortal ascenders on the Havona circuits inaugurated sweeping modifications in the organization of the central and divine creation. Modifications undoubtedly in, initiated by the Supreme Being, the God of evolutionary creatures. In response to the arrival of the first of his evolutionary children from the no, seven experiential children, experiential children from the seven super universes. The appearance of the graduate guides together with the creation of the tertiary seraphim, is I saying that right? Yeah, that's right, supernophim. Supernophim. That's right. That's so right. supernophim is indicative of these performances of God the Supreme. Okay. Uh, presented by divine concert of your Uversa. Uversa, that's right. Now, so the uh, God, the Supreme, uh, they, they say two things here. First, because of creation of the tertiary supernophim, which is the angels that help us along when we're in Havona, right? And the super universe. But it says they believe because of the appearance of these graduate guides together with the supernophim, the tertiary supernophim, that these are performances of God the Supreme because of the experiential part needed for mortals when you get to Havona. Makes so sense. in other words, um, once Grand Fonda appeared and evolutionary creatures started pouring in to Havana, is that about the time the uh, supernophim were created? The tertiary supernophim and the graduate guides both. Because about before that, that same time. Yeah, yeah, they weren't needed, right? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, there weren't any mortals to, to help along. Or, you know, by then we're, we're four stage spirits, but new spirits, in essence, to help along, right? Okay. Wow. <laughs> So we made it in 30 minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> Can I ask a dumb question? No such thing as a dumb question, but go ahead and ask. You haven't known me that long. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know I, what I used to say, Gary, is this. No such thing as a dumb question, just dumb people that don't ask them. Right? <laughs> but anyway, is there some way to look at... I have some of a business background and I, you know, 
I get confused easily. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, I can see somehow my mind works organization wise. I'd like to see a organizational chart of the universe, I guess Everything. you call it. Have you know, I got I, something for you? <laughs> I have that too, you know, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be a great help. And I've got a, and another question. Uh, uh -huh. is, can you give me a hierarchy of people? Of entities? Oh, Lord, I can. I can mm -hmm. point you to two, two different things too, okay? There are two things that'll help you out tremendously okay let me find it here if you go to our main main website page right fifth epical revelation fellowship or the atlanta urantia study group either one okay on the page on the left hand side you can actually find the same chart all over our videos but uh let me find the right here. You see this thing? It says down here, Don Estes Universe Reality Chart. Do you see that? Can you see that on yeah, the Yeah, I see where you're highlighting it. Yeah, right there. Don Estes UNI Universe Reality Chart. Okay. Uh -huh. If you click on that, it's going to give you some information about the chart. And you see this little bitty chart? Mm -hmm. This little bitty chart in blue is humongous. Mm -hmm. yeah, it okay, it's about a, four feet by four feet. It's more like uh, probably six feet by eight feet. Okay. That's why everything looks so small on it. But you can bring it up as a PDF file and make it as little or as small as you want. This is the chart I used on the 11 week course back in 2013 called the origin history and destiny of universe reality. Okay. This is the chart I use for that 11 week class. If you watch those videos, the, the video part of it is awful, but the information I talk you through is, is invaluable. invaluable. Okay, that will prepare you. This chart will prepare you for the forward. And in 2019, I redid the forward, but that's where you can find one chart, right? Okay, now the, this is, I can get the explanation. Where now on this chart? On this chart, I go, I go through all the top part of this chart in the 11 week course. Yeah. Okay, now there's also, let me show you on the same page, if I can find these. Um, there are two links down here. Here we go, right above it. Right above Don Estes link, there's a universal father info chart. You see that? If you click on that, it's gonna give you a spreadsheet. Then go back one. I have uh, okay. Universal uh, Father info sheet or what? Do you yeah, yeah. Hang on. Let, let me go back here. It says Universal Father info chart. You see it? There? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, before we leave here, let me give you two more the Orvantan info chart and the Nebadon info chart. Okay. All three of these are charts I used in that same class, okay? So if you click on the Universal Father info chart, you're gonna find out that it's got a breakdown of everything I've been teaching you for 11 years. All the beings, it's a, it's a spreadsheet. Basically, it's a, a what, what you call this, dear? Um, Organizational chart. Organizational chart. That's what I was trying to come up with. It's the organizational chart. This one is the Universal Father one. If you go back, click the one right above it. This is just the seventh super universe. You see this This one? This is mm -hmm. just the seventh super universe organizational chart. 
basically this is organizational chart for it's just duplicated seven times. Yes, that's right. There's one for each of the seven super universe. Then there's a Nebadon information chart. This is just our local universe uh, chart, okay? And this, yeah, these things yeah, are really ham, handy because they also go through uh, the Lucifer Rebellion, who was loyal and who was not, okay? So there's lots and lots of information on these charts. And I can tell you there's about three or four different places on all of them where the information is wrong because I've, I've corrected it for the one I used on the class. But you can find those, you can find these right here on this website. You can actually order it through this website. I haven't done it in years, so I don't know if they've made any changes to it or not. But I believe at the bottom, see this is, this is the system, Lucifer Rebellion, all that stuff. But I believe at the bottom, you can actually, there's somewhere here you can order the chart itself. Hmm. But you don't have to order the chart because these are PDF files. You can, uh, you can download them and use them as much as you want to. There's a, the, also a link on here for the Arvantan one and the Paradise one too, the Father's Okay, one. PDF okay. file. Yeah, these are all PDF files. You can, you can download them as PDF files. Private okay. data file, okay. Right, okay. And you could spend days and days and days looking at these charts. Yeah, we have these out in our patio and we sit out there sometimes and just look at yeah. them. Our, yeah. our version of it is like a eight foot by eight foot wall of the things, you know, that we use during the, uh, during, during 11, the 11, 11 week course. 11 week and you can find the 11 week course origins and destinies. If you go down here, um, about halfway down the page, right past the major, the weekly stuff uh, and the donation buttons for the other organizations. But there's a, um, link right here and this will take you to the our, our web page that has all the videos from 2019 2013 and all of them is, are on here well this is the 2013 but you can get to the 2019 the same way okay to the left or you can go to youtube if you go to youtube and look up the videos on uh Part one, all the all the YouTube video, all the videos from 2019, which are a little bit better for the Ford than 2013. The 2019 ones are on YouTube right in the area where all the, the first part of the book is. Hmm. Okay. And I know they're there because me and Diane's looked through what, two or three of them this week. We watched all the original 2013 Origin and Destiny videos. And the, the video quality on those are awful. I'm not kidding you. That's when I first started the recording. I had nobody that could watch the camera. So I didn't know half the time whether we were recording or not or what it looked like or anything else. But I went ahead and recorded it and put it out there because the audio part is worth listening to. It really is. Even though I did it myself, we, we go watch it every few years just to refresh our memories. That's why I was telling Rodney, the reason I remember the Grand the Master Universe correct is because we just watched it this week on the forward part. And we yesterday, I think we got it through Divinity and Deity, didn't we? And that's something Jane was asking about just a few weeks ago. In the Ford, there's uh, the videos we did on the Ford. We have very good explanations. I went through on divinity and deity. And if you understand the Ford, when you read through the book, you'll have it. That's just all there is to it uh, because it just explains so much. Now, that sounds like a commercial for myself. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Roger Paul's. <laughs> And, okay, can, and contribute. Please. Make sure your tides and letters are coming in. Your tides. Mm. <laughs> I don't ever do that. You don't ever hear me. You ever, do no. you ever sell prayer uh, towels? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's out, outside my purview. I don't ask for funds. 
we do this for God. We don't do it to get rich. You can see that by the way we live. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, any other questions for tonight? Because we've got a couple more minutes here we can spend. Does that pretty much clear up the um, higher personality, not, higher personalities of the infinite spirit? Next time we'll go and go through the messenger hosts of space, which is a paper 25. And uh, we're going to just keep working through these papers. I can't wait till we get back to the Lucifer Rebellion. I'm kind of anxious to go through that again. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Well, but maybe it's a repeat what's going on. Now. Repeat what's going on, you know, all that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I'll just keep looking down the side of this page and you're going to find all sorts of useful links to, to different things. So uh, some of the things I need to update, like the YouTubes for 2019 uh, for the Horde, probably. I don't know if it's on here or not. So you, uh, the, we have a YouTube paper for every single paper out here. So. You know, it's amazing that you've got all this on the on YouTube and you haven't been banned yet, so. I know. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I know. It's been out there quite a while. Yes. Right. I think including the YouTube and the Vimeo, because everything that's on YouTube is on Vimeo too. I think we've got about 600 videos out there right now. Mm. So that's, that's quite, a, quite a lot of uh, videos, um, any way you look at it. Now here's the forward on YouTube uh, right here on the left-hand side. And here's the pre-forward stuff. Uh, on the left hand side also so you can find that down there too just click on each each video all right there's something else i need to show y'all tonight while we're looking at the the web page and stuff when you go to they have changed both um chrome and firefox has changed the way if you don't have a secure page the way it shows things you see can you see my mouse up here at the top of this mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay that is a little lock this means that this website is a secure website okay mm -hmm. so if you had to put your i don't put credit cards and everything on this website so you don't really need to have it secured i just did it because it kept saying this is not a secure website okay but when you go to our links you know our urantia brick version links which is where we are here if you click on the bi urantia book any of them that says b you see the b before them mm -hmm. here if you click on any of these it will take you to a page. Well, I've already been there. Okay, let me, let me show you what it looks like when it's not. Okay, this is what it looks like when you first come on. It's white, okay? And this version is meant to be watched in blue, okay? The reason it comes out white is because uh, Firefox and Chrome both has changed it where if this little lock is is not is unlocked it considers it unsecure okay so if you want to watch it and it's totally fine to do it this way if you want to watch it in blue the way it was intended you have to go up and hit this little lock and it says see down here it says connection secure firefox has blocked parts of this page that are not secure which is hogwash okay it's all secure because you don't enter any information on it, okay? So if you hit over here, the little arrow, it, you can hit, you see this disable protection for now? Mm -hmm. If you hit Ooh. that, it will show you the page the way it was intended, blue. Oh, I remember that page. Yeah. Okay. You have to do the same thing when you go to sections or thing, it, it'll come up white, if you, you see this little lock now, it's got a, a red mark through it. Mm -hmm. If I make it, uh, if I put the security back on it again, enable protection, it goes back white again. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you wanna see it the way I intended it, you have to disable the protection for now under Firefox. And then you'll see it the way the, the page was intended to view. 
Why is this important? Let me tell you why. As you get older, it's hard, harder for elderly people to see black on white, okay? It's much easier on our eyes to see these paper, papers with blue with white, white or yellow print on them. It's just easier to read, okay? So that's why I did this this way. So if you go to next week's paper, for instance, you click it in oh, while it's blue, it'll take you to the blue version, right? If you don't, if you want to watch it in white, go back to the original page here, the UB version links, and you can hit any of these links down here, the other four, and it'll show you the same exact pa paper in white, right? You see that? Messenger holes in space. And that's next week's paper in white. And it still has all the pictures and all that stuff, just like the other one. It's just in white print. If you want to read it in white, you can. Okay. But Roger, yeah. Did you know what you just did? What's that? You confirmed I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am too. That's why I did yeah, it. We, this all way. we all are, you know. And it's just easier for us to read the blue. Now, when I was teaching this at my other house and I had the, the video, the slides behind me, I had them all in blue. The reason I had them all in blue, easier to see, okay? Easier to record too. Make sense? Mm. That's why we did all this. That's why there are eight different versions uh, on this page that you can study from, okay? Wow. Four of them's in blue, four of them's in white. We so have it with saying, the picture and without the pictures. You're basically saying that if I go back and read the introduction, there's a chance I'll understand everything. If you listen to the videos while you're reading it, yes. That's what I'm saying. If you go to YouTube or Vimeo, either one, you go down here to the side, right? and click the link hang, hang on clip oh i'm on the wrong page let's go back home first if you go down the side on the home page you can either look at it from the channels okay see the channels you can go to the channels to the ub forward and under channels you're going to have all the version of uh the forward see there starts out with part 12 of the forward 2019 and you keep going down through here and you'll eat and start on number one just keep going to the next until you get 2019 number one right and it will show you part six part five forward Cookie. section one here we go no that's not the right one either one more next one here we go, part two, part one right there. May 21st, 2019, you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the video for the forward paper number one. And each one of these are an hour long, every one of them. And by the so, time, time you get through all 11 or 12, however many there are of them, you will understand the forward much better, okay? Much, much better. It's worth taking an hour and listening. Take 10 days, take one hour out of the day and listen to the paper. And by the time you get through 10 days, you'll have a pretty good concept of what the forward is talking about. Okay. Because I try to, I try to explain it as simple as human minds can think. Okay. Because it's difficult. It's a hard part to get. People get frustrated with the Urantia book because they can't get through the forward. All right. And it's hard to understand the rest of the book unless you understand the forward. The forward was meant to be used as a reference, not as a forward. OK, they should have called it something else. They should have called it the reference for the book mm -hmm. or, or something along that line, because that's really what it is. It's a reference piece for the rest. So of the what book. you're saying is if we would go back to and read the forward that's applicable to a certain section, 
we would be better off in understanding the section. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. There's hope for me yet. There is, Gary. And if mm -hmm. you listen to all these videos, you'll know where to go when you start to say study a section and you get to divinity and you say oh yeah it's in the forward it's in the th second page paper of the forward right the second video of the forward and I, you know rodney can tell you he was at all these meetings i break it down in minute detail everything so you know hopefully you can understand it. you know but that's the goal anyway now how good a teacher i am only time will tell right whether you understand it or not all right makes sense yes thank, thank you. you thank right. you yeah it i have to get familiar with it but i think it's all going to make some sense sooner or later it will I, mm -hmm. I i i believe it will gary it it took me gosh five years to even start to understand it gary i'm not kidding you and i read it over and over and over again I bet I've read it 40 times in my lifetime, at least. So. Well, I'll be honest with you, I've been dealing with this book, and I didn't realize it for a long time. Uh, I started with it, and I didn't understand it. And a friend of mine asked me what's the most significant book I ever read in my entire life. So I told him about it, mm -hmm. wound up lending the book to him. They, I couldn't believe it. This person totally destroyed the book. I mean, it was in pieces. I mean, yeah. she just like unbelievable, just tore it up. It's like, it's just nuts. So they bought me a new book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't, you know, they kind of made fun of me. She made fun of me because she says, you don't understand it. Yeah. And then that ticked me off because I thought it was reasonably intelligent. And um, so I started reading again. Well, Gary, when I first started reading it, I actually took a brand spanking new book and I ripped it apart one paper at a time. Okay. Oh, you never told me that. Yeah. I actually tore the book apart because I would take one paper and I would study it over and over and over and over again. Then I'd go to the next paper and I'd study it over and over and over again. But I took the book apart to do that. So when I got done with it, it was like you said, it was it was so ratty, there was nothing left to the book because I would carry it everywhere I went. You know, I'd put, you know, down in Key West, I was running around in shorts and t-shirts and my 10 speed bike. So I'd stick it in a backpack and I'd take it down and read it somewhere you know but that went on for years but then i had my regular book that i would take to meetings you know i i went to meetings with friends down there and stuff and but the most of my study was done in that book and i highlighted it I, it had so many colors on it you can hardly read the print anymore by the time i got done with it well at one time i went through that paper book i tore apart and i notated every single passage from the new and old testament that hit, had any reference to the book okay oh so you know that's that's how serious i was at studying because my idea back then i was studying to be a baptist minister right so to me this is the way i digested the book and it took a long long time it's not something that just happens overnight and there's no place you can go and have someone explain it like that. You just can't, you know, you can take the classes online and all this and everybody has a different teaching style and, and all that stuff, but it was never adequate for the way I wanted to learn the book. So I had to teach it to myself the way I thought it would work, right? And that's what you have to do, you know? You have yes, to I find- I was just thinking, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do it the way that works for you the best, yeah. you know. And if the classes we have help you, great. If they don't, maybe there's another way for you to do it. But I, I want you to come into the classes and let us try to explain it to you, just like we do. That's why we put the videos out there online on Facebook and YouTube and all these other places so that people can get it little bits of, at a time so that you can digest it, you know, because it's a lot yeah. of information out there you know it's, it's not it's, it's, it's phenomenal i mean it's it is over, I, be honest with you it's overwhelming and yeah i, yeah. I think i'm a fairly intelligent person yeah but, um, it's you know it's a lot to it i mean just it tremendous amount well you're and not the I first person that, ever i'll be honest one. roger i know yeah. people that have been studying this book one man from 1970 yeah and I, he doesn't have near the understanding that you do. Well, I started you. in 73 uh, okay. reading the book. And I didn't start teaching, teaching the book till 2011. So <laughs> it was a lot of studying to get to that point. And the only reason I started teaching it, Rodney can tell you this. We had a group of people that was, that was working. And one day we were going through a meeting and we used to just read it and try to discuss it and stuff. And I don't know, remember who it was, but somebody said, why don't you just teach it to us? You know? And I thought, okay, I can do that. You know? So that's, that's really how it started. I did. I didn't think I had the big head and knew everything and all that stuff. That's not why we did this. We did this because I wanted to help people understand it. And the best way to do that was to teach the classes. You know, so that's how we started doing it. Yeah, and we dropped out of that group because that's all they were doing was just reading the book. We weren't yeah. discussing it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was good experience reading, learning how to pronounce the words and everything, but uh, we just dropped out of that and, and started our own group and uh, did a prayer before and after, which they, yeah. they were supposed to. Yeah. I'm actually a member of a similar group where they just read the book. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, sometimes discuss it. Yeah. Jane, were you going to say something, dude? The only thing I need to say is I, I'm sorry. I'm enjoying it, but I got to exit. I'm down to 10% battery. And I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want to be kicked out without saying goodbye. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we need to close down for tonight. Anyway. God bless. That's all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. And thank you at home for coming. Uh, please come see us again. I'll probably not preached so much next time <laughs> thank you so much thank you Bye. 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 Get some smart pills love you guys uh, yeah, love you guys too we'll see you next time bye-bye bye-bye